Welcome back to 1964 and the very British space program. It is the 31st of March 1964, just about to become April, and we are launching Hesperus for Messenger 5, or well, just Messenger 5 will do, and this is going to go to Saturn. So, uh, this is going to sit in orbit for a couple of weeks before departure. Um, because this is going to be a busy month for us. This is a very busy month. In fact, it's such a busy month that some of this month is actually in the next episode because it's that busy. That's how many launches we have managed to squeeze in. But please remember to uh, comment down below, like, subscribe, tell me what your thoughts are. Tell me if you want some changes. Tell me where you think we should go next. Um, we're going to just watch as Messenger 5 gets into orbit. We already have... Um, uh, the sister craft to this messenger six delayed which means it's going to be slated for a jupiter mission instead of going to saturn as well but uh yeah as we get into orbit there i think it's about time we get on with our next mission so it is the 11th of april 1964 and while this looks like the mission that we've just left this is actually the uh, the first of our two Venus missions departing. So this is Emissary 1. You can see there they go. Look, you can see the two capsules on the top there. And it's firing its engine. You'll notice it's not firing all of that uh, intermediate transfer stage engine set at once. We've actually compartmentalized them off a little bit. This thing is actually going to be firing uh, just a few of them. So we're firing four. And um, we're going to save the rest because this, uh, this stage has... Uh, has basically been used for getting into orbit and it's all sorts of other things we want to do with it so it's going to help us head on out there and then we're going to do a bit of refining so it's going to use some of that fuel that's still in the intermediate transfer stage to do some refining of this orbit and what we're trying to do is particularly for this craft because it's it's sort of delta v is is, is more marginal than the other uh, the other craft the messenger 4 that's going to go out we're just trying to, as soon as possible, get the biggest bang for our buck with our, our Delta V by, by using it for refining this orbit as much as possible. Now, obviously the, the orbital model in Kerbal, in this sort of Kerbal, without Principia or whatever you want, is uh, is quite basic. So it, it's, you know, it's, it's not massively, so it's not embodied, but we're trying to sort of refine this to give us a nice orbit. It, we, in olden day, olden gear Kerbals, it sounds terrible, olden day Kerbal, um, you would have actually had some lots of changes with floating point issues when you went across um, uh, sphere of influence borders and stuff like that. So you'd actually probably have waited to do this until you're in the sphere of influence of, of Kerbal or, the, or the, 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 the sun. But we're actually going to do it around Earth because you can actually get some good bang for your buck if you do the right plane changes. So there you go. We're trying to do these plane changes. And it is very much a fiddle moving them around and, and redoing them and, and, and just retrying them. And there you go. We're flying off there to then do this this repulsion we're going to do it part way out of the sphere influence of of earth just just try and get us into a nice thing and you can see we're actually going to use the rcs for this well we're using the um htp kerosene rcs that we have on board um so we're just catalyzing that htp and and you know electrical can, can the firing of the of the rcs ports and whatnot to give us that sort of that, that thrust right now it's not as, as efficient and it's nowhere near as efficient as the main engines and it's uh, it's not actually that powerful so it takes a long time this is actually sped up quite a lot i think it's three times speed in the game and it's also been sped up by about eight times in, in reality so it, it takes a while to do this so burning away or repulsing away they're firing away and we're getting in as close as possible we don't want to hit the atmosphere we want to come near it and we're just going to set that off now 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 that's on its way also on the 11th of April 1964, we have the departure of Messenger 4. So this is again another one of our standard Messenger craft. Um, yes, the clouds around Earth need to be fixed. I know I need to press buttons. I need to do that. I keep trying to remind myself to do it. So again, this one is using four of its uh, selection of, I think, eight engines. It's not going to use all of them. So it's going to use those to set the burn off. And uh, then again, this one is going to do a slight slight change slight refinement it's actually going to carry out its its final refinement once it gets in outside of of earth's sphere of influence we want to actually be in in the sun's sphere of influence interplanetary space before we actually refine this one this one is not as important regarding its its interstate inter, interface with the with venus 
it's going to be doing some orbital science. It's going to be doing some relays. Anyway, moving on. So we had the 11th of April. Now it's the 12th of April, um, 1964. And this is Faraday 1 launch F004. Its mission is basically science. We're going to do some science in orbit. On board, we have veteran pilot Carol Freeman and uh, engineer Lisa Robinson. And this is her, this is her uh, second Faraday flight. She was the, uh, she's actually the first person to fly the same model of orbital craft twice in a program, I believe. I think we've always had each pilot basically get one flight. So Lisa Robinson has a record, even though she's flying with Carol Freeman, who is probably one of our most experienced pilots. So this craft is actually gonna go up and it's gonna be doing a power tool evaluation, in-flight sleep analysis, and synergistic effects of zero gravity and radiation on white blood cells. Again, preparing for that longer term duration mission in space. However, the limitations of the Faraday one mean that this is only gonna be a 24 hour flight. It uh, we're not going to do any um, sort of changes in uh, orbital pattern or anything with this craft. This craft is literally going up, going to do the science. They're going to do a little bit of uh, station keeping. So once we decouple there, you'll actually see the upper stage is basically used as a little target. And one of the things we're really focusing on at the moment is actually um, just checking that this this Faraday layout because the actual layout for, for thrust control, the RCS control on it, is gonna be carried forward to future designs. That's something that we, we're, we're actually really sort of refining on this right now. Um, you'll notice we've developed a slight roll and this was a problem. I think our roll, our roll control is uh, problematic at times on this craft and we're not entirely sure why we're having trouble with it, but particularly this flight, we had roll issues. Um, however, this is the penultimate Faraday one flight. Um, after the next one of these, we come in there and we bump the yeah, see. Yeah, this is part of the reason we're gonna change the Faraday program. But anyway, th there's many reasons we're gonna modify this. The This is the penultimate of this uh, Faraday one model. We're gonna have a, a Faraday one B come in after the next of these, which will um, be sort of a stepping stone towards the next step on our sort of development program for this uh, project. Um, in reality, this craft is just carrying out some science and it's it's just trying to figure out, you know, what can we do with it? What can we do station keeping wise? And you can see there, we're actually we're actually station keeping quite well with a, a rolling tumbling target, which is, you know, quite quite impressive actually. The craft, are, the crew are able to look out and see this spinning craft near them. They could not dock with it um, because we've not got that sort of ability, that skill yet. Anyway, they allow it to basically fly off and. And then it's time to come home and they're, they're actually going to come and land in Australia because why not? We, we have the opportunity after about 24 hours, it seems that our orbital, um, our orbital path will put us over Australia. So we're going to bring it down in Australia about 24 hours after landing down, taking off from Spade Adam, we're going to land down in Australia, which is uh, different. Um, we've done that before a few times now, so we're obviously getting a lot of um, we're getting a lot of uh, flight tickets that are one way from Australia to uh, to the UK. Probably confusing the airlines a little bit, and <clears throat> I don't even know how do you how do you do passport control when you've you've come in from outer space? Do they have passports with them? I don't know. Uh, it's, it's lucky that Australia is part of the Commonwealth and uh, can can look after us in that regard. So. You know, obviously they took 24 hours to get there via space. Um, it's likely to take them longer um, to get back. So you see again, we, we detach our service module quite low down actually. We are hitting atmospheric interface before we detach that that service module. And and this one, this one was a concern because we did not move away as quickly as we would have liked. Um, so we're maybe, we're maybe starting to feel the, the nerves on this approach right now. Um, we are uh, coming through now and you can see the clouds are moving past. Um, yeah, it's it's still present, it's still visible, and um, we uh, we are keeping an eye on it, shall we say. There is a concern that particularly with that sort of distance, if it then started to decelerate or decelerate quicker than we were, we could have some sort of collision, we could have all sorts of issues, particularly also if it explodes, it could it could fire material off uh, in different directions. It, it poses a hazard, and even though it's actually a low percentage risk, there is a there is a percentage risk, so we are concerned about that. So the crew are gonna bring this down over Australia. The outback is wonderful. We're gonna bring it down there and land it as easy as possible. We're taking our speed off now. The uh, the uprated 
the uprated uh, heat shield is working a treat. So this thing should be capable of, uh, you know, potentially lunar return temperatures. You know, as there's no sort of s concerns regarding temperature on the craft, nothing like that. Um, some of the things we are looking at are particularly the shroud around the parachute. We're actually looking at whether we need to detach it on on come down and things like that, but also the main body of the craft. So you see there, we've actually retained that 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 cover we may start to get rid of that we we haven't decided so safe touch down there so that was the 12th of april now it's the 15th of april and we have um the first emissary and a messenger for leaving spheres, earth's sphere of influence and entering into interplanetary space um at which point we're going to do some trimming of, of orbits. We're going to start with emissary one we're just going to have a look now we're in interplanetary space we can actually try and bring it um into a slightly less inclined approach we're actually we're aware of the fact that we need to get signal we're gonna we've got a, a couple of craft that may act as relays around venus um but we also want to actually uh, make sure that we can bring this thing in and uh, control where those those re-entry vehicles or those entry vehicles are actually going to come down and we could go polar with them um but we we're, we're most interested around the equator at the moment we have most data from around the equator. We haven't done any mapping of it at all. The clouds are very thick, um, but we do feel that it's actually, you know, at least we can we can sort of get a couple of them in at the equator and then we can compare equatorial sites and we can identify whether, you know, the significant differences in different parts of the equatorial equatorial region. So that's what we're doing. And once we've, we've got uh, Emissary 1 lined up, we then start to refine Messenger 4. So Messenger 4, of course, had that slightly sort of more vague approach to Venus and now it's doing its refining as well and again it's it's actually going to come in quite inclined in its orbit because we already have craft that are actually quite uh, equatorial um, but we're going to we're going to put this one equatorial as well because well we want we want we want it to act as a relay one of its primary concerns we're going to give it some inclination but it is going to be a relay so still in April and it is now the 21st of April. So that is, you know, uh, nine days after the last Faraday launch, we are launching the last of the Faraday One craft. This is the flight F005, and uh, it will be doing some science again. It's another one of those science and experience missions. It is doing in-flight sleep analysis and star occlusion navigation. And it is crewed by veterans uh, Anita May, who is on her second orbital flight, her first in the Faraday One. Her first flight overall was actually in a, in a White Javelin 3. And we have rookie scientist Deborah Newton. She is the final member of our third astronaut class to go to space. So that is the final member of the third astronaut class. We've got the entirety of the class now with their astronaut wings. Um, as with the previous flight, this is going to be a maximum duration of 24 hours, primarily because of electricity. Um, we have an electricity problem, uh, which is we we can't really carry the heavy batteries on the uh, the White Trident 2 with the capsule, with the with the sort of um, resources for survival and everything else. It's just the batteries just become too heavy. So we're going to have to look at alternative sources of electricity, alternative methods of doing that. Uh, and again, this is the final flight of the Faraday one. The next of these is going to be re retrofitted um, and we're going to look at adding some longevity and targeting that power supply problem. So the crew are actually going to spend just time in, in orbit um, carrying out those those final few scientific programs they have on, on task. There's a little bit more we want to do with the, the final Faraday one flight, which is the retrofitted version, which is still to come. Um, but we're basically wrapping up our science for on orbit with these craft. However, they do spend some time uh, sort of orientating near the uh, the, the launch, uh, the lot, the upper stage, and they also spend some time uh, talking to school children on on the radio because we're we're trying to you know we're trying to move hearts and minds and really bring the Commonwealth together. So they're talking to a lot of people from different Commonwealth nations, bringing them together, promoting space and the Commonwealth together and, and how great it can be. And they also have a special message, a special message to Her Majesty the Queen, who is having her 38th birthday while they're in orbit. So they they, they have a little phone call with the Queen who congratulates them and all of their, their, their team. And she receives wonderful prayers from them on her birthday, her 38th birthday. 
So after uh, after about 24 hours and uh, a communication with the monarch, um, it's time for them to think about coming home before uh, their power runs out. So on the light side of the planet, we're not going to be landing in Australia this time. We're coming down into the ocean, I believe. And so we're just going to head off home. Um, and that's going to be towards the end of this episode. We have had a very busy, busy time of this month we haven't actually finished yet this craft is going to come down just off the north coast of australia we actually undershoot our return um so instead of landing in the outback we're actually going to land off the north coast but that's fine the australian coast guard will be there again we're quite late on our decoupling of that uh, of that service module which yeah i think it's something that um when we actually change our service module design which will be coming with the uh, faraday 2 i think we're gonna have to look at a different approach to decoupling that because uh yeah we're, we've we've heard concerns shall we say from from the designers anyway from me from the team and towards the end of april we're going to throw another couple of missions in april still and we'll see those next time until the next time though please comment down below like subscribe tell us what you want tell us what you want to see where do you think they should go what's the next step and uh, have a great one